What's going on YouTube? Welcome to Essie's Angling. I've had quite a few comments and messages now asking me to do a video on how I prepare bread ready to go on the method feeder. So I'm going to show you how I make the bread flake so that it's perfect every single time. So you might be wondering, Westy, why should I use bread on the method feeder and not ground bait on pellets? Well, as you know, I still use ground bait and pellets on the method feeder. I just like to use bread from time to time. Few reasons for it. It's cheap. So both of these loaves, 40 pence each. One of these loaves will probably do me for a full session, maybe even two. The other reason is all coarse fish love bread. I don't think there's a fish out there that won't home in on bread. The smell, the attraction, the clouds that it makes in the water, it's all brilliant for method feeder fishing. The third reason is it's very hard to overfeed with bread because it dissolves so quickly in the water column. That's why it can make an absolutely amazing bait for winter. If you want an alternative to ground bait that's going to save you a few quid through the winter months where you might not want to buy a big bag of ground bait, maybe you're only doing a short session or whatever, Bread's the way forward, okay? So like I said, I've got both of these loaves here for 80p, and that's three sessions worth. It'll keep for about a week if you seal it upright. Okay, so what are we gonna need to make the bread feed? You're gonna need some kind of blender. Uh, you don't need one as high tech as this. A little Nutribullet blender will do fine. I just use this because I can whiz up pretty much the full loaf in one go. You're also going to need a bowl to tip it out into. So uh, we'll keep that on standby. I'll show you why we're going to use that in a bit. Make sure it's a, a fairly small bowl because you want to tip it back into the uh, bread packet a little bit later on. So first thing we want to do is carefully open up your bread. You don't want to rip the packaging because we're going to seal the bread back up in this later on. And that's so important because you don't want the oxygen and the air getting to the bread because it'll dry it out. If it dries out a little bit, that's not a problem. You can put a tiny sprinkling of water in on the bank and it'll just revive the bread. So if you want to see how bread performs on the bank, there's plenty of method feeder fishing with bread videos on the channel. So if you're not seeing them, now's your chance to subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit that bell notification just so you don't miss another video. So we've opened our bag, we've not ripped it. And what I want to do now is just stuff a load of this loaf, including the crust. What putting the crust in as well will do is it'll create particles within the mix that won't dissolve as quickly as the white bread. So let's put another couple of slices in. This first batch, I'm going to make it quite coarse. I'm not going to make it a really fine crumb. You want some coarse particles and you want some really fine particles in there, okay? The reason you want some bigger chunks in there, I'm talking maybe like quarter of an inch chunks, is as I was saying before, bread dissolves really quickly in the water. So you need those bigger chunks just to dissolve that little bit slower. So I'm just gonna put this on high and whiz it up for a few seconds. So, I'm just going to keep pressing the bread down. Just make sure that you're blending it up evenly. So that's our first batch. It's going to go absolutely everywhere. Can you see in this how we've got some big chunks in there and we've also got some fine particles? That's how you want it, okay? The bigger chunks will also help it hold to the method feeder better when it hits the water. If it's just fine, it'll literally just dissolve straight off the method feeder, which isn't what we want. So let's clean ourselves up a bit here. This batch, I'm gonna whiz up a little bit finer. So a little tip here, make sure that you leave a few slices of bread unblended in the bottom of the pack. That's absolutely great for if the fish start cruising in the summer months and you want to try bread on the pellet waggler or something like that. Or even if you want to try bread on the method feeder itself, I always leave a few slices just so I can use some larger pieces of bread. So that's what I normally do. 
You might go the full session and not use them, but it's always worth having them there. Okay, so let's do this one a little bit finer. Sorted. So that's literally it. It takes seconds. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make an absolute mess here because this never goes in the bag perfectly. You can see just how much it makes. But don't be afraid of putting loads of bread on the feeder. If you're wondering what sort of feeder you should use for bread, you can use a cage feeder, obviously. Um, what I find works best is either a banjo feeder, like this Preston Innovations one, or a hybrid feeder. The high walls just help keep the bread on the feeder. You can use it on a normal flatbed method feeder if you wanted to, uh, if you're fishing in the margins or something like that. But if you're in four or five foot of water, you just want a slightly deeper sided method feeder just to hold that bread on and make sure that um, it gets to the bottom. Right. If there's any big chunks, like really big chunks left in, just break them up. <laughs> Making a right mess of you. Don't matter. There we go. <laughs> Let's put that back in our bowl. I did get two loaves of bread just because I'll be fishing a couple of days in a row, but I'm not going to mix them both up. I think you get the idea. It's a bit easier to pour the fine stuff in. Now, I'm just going to give that a mix up. Just to incorporate all those bigger and smaller particles. Now what you want to do is you want to squeeze all the air out of the bag. Like that. And then just knot it. And I'm not kidding you when I say I've had one of these in my tackle bag well over a week and it's still been fine for when I come round to it. A little bit dry, but that doesn't matter. Literally you can just add a sprinkle of water so you can really have a play about with the bread. You can put some goo in it, you can put some attractants in it. Whatever you want to do with the bread, it's really versatile. Obviously you can use it as is. It's an absolutely mega attractant as it is. But if you've never seen carp taking bread off the top, you know how much they love it. This is very, very effective for carp. But like I said before, not just carp, all coarse fish love this. Tench love bread, bream love bread, roach love bread, all the fish that you're going to be targeting on commercial venues will eat this. So, that's it. Simple as that. Like I said, that big bag there will do me for a couple of sessions and we're fine. And when I want to use it, I'm not tied that mega tight. There we go. So let me show you how it loads onto the method feeder. So we've got our method feeder there, we've got our mould. What I start by doing is squeezing some of that bread into the feeder first of all. You want it really tight that first lot. Then I usually cap it with a lighter press which I'm going to show you. So I'll really squeeze that in. If you're worried about it sticking in the feeder it won't. Water will permeate through that feeder, through the bread, and it'll all start to expand on the bottom. And all the little pieces, all the little cracks, it looks like it moulds into one. But what will actually happen is the water will get into all them cracks and it expands on the bottom. I've tried it in a tank. I'm not going to be putting it in a tank for you today, just because I haven't got the time to fill it up and stuff like that. But um, there we go. So I'm just going to double load it, like I said, with the mould now. And there we go. You can imagine your hook bait in that. That's absolutely amazing. Works perfectly. Okay folks, so I hope this short tutorial has been helpful. I hope you've picked up a couple of tips. If you have any questions about anything that I've done today, any of the techniques or methods, please don't hesitate to drop a comment in the comment section. I always try and get back to everybody in the comments where I can. So if you're not quite sure on something, just ask. There's no such thing as a stupid question. And thank you very much to everybody that's already subscribed to the channel. The channel's growing mega quickly. And I just want to say I love and appreciate you all. So thanks very much and I'll see you in the next Westies Angling.